Good day, people. Good day. Good day. Hope you are doing well. I'm doing great. So today's video, guys, we're talking about setting strong, healthy, emotional boundaries. <clears throat> Again, setting strong, healthy, emotional boundaries. So let me start by saying this, guys, right? As empaths, one of the areas we fall short is setting boundaries, specifically emotional boundaries, right? And as you know, we are by design emotional sponges, right? We feel deeply, we feel others' emotions very deeply, <clears throat> right? And this leads us to want to walk in their shoes, right? Empathize and sympathize with them, huh? Which often leads us further to assume the savior, right? To want to help them, to want to save them, to want to fix them, right? A lot of us suffer from what I call the savior complex, okay? We want to save everybody, we want to fix everybody, we want to help everybody, right? And one thing we got to understand is that not everybody we come across that needs help is ready to be helped, right? We can't save everybody, we can't help everybody, all right? We need to understand that, and that will often alleviate a lot of the problems we run into, okay? So, let's get deeper into the video. We often end up uh, exhausting ourselves, depleting ourselves, huh? as we attempt to help others, as we attempt to save others, right? As we attempt to fix others, okay? And this often leads us to disappointments because a lot of folks that we come across who we venture out to help are narcissistic, right? As we know, okay? A lot of folks are narcissistic and they only see our help, okay? Or they only see our efforts to help them, our efforts to fix them, our efforts to save them. They only see that as supply, right? Rather than seeing it for what it truly is, rather than seeing it as a help, right? They see that as supply, okay? And so what ends up happening is they end up depleting us, right? They end up siphoning our energy, right? And depleting us, right? Which leads to disappointment because we then took on so much of someone else's fight, right? something that we had nothing to do with all right we have ended up making it our own right and now we're exhausting ourselves trying to pull them up out of that situation and oftentimes what happens too is that because these these folks are narcissistic huh? they end up abandoning their problems right they end up shifting their problems onto us okay Though we venture out to help them, right? We venture out to help, to save, to fix them, right? What they end up doing is shift the problems onto us now, and now it becomes our problem, okay? So now, not only are we gonna be responsible for them, but now we're gonna be responsible for ourselves as well, right? So we gotta dig ourselves out of it, and then dig them out of it too, right? And this often leave, leave us exhausted, huh? This often leave us depleted. And like I mentioned earlier, disappointed because these folks are truly not ready for help. They're just looking for a handout, okay? They're just looking for supply. Folks are narcissistic, for real, right? And they're just looking for someone with good energy to start siphoning, right? They don't want to put in the work on their own, right? And so they're looking for someone with good energy 
to siphon, right? As we step in trying to help people, as we step in trying to save people, as we step in trying to uh, fix people, they end up transferring their burden onto us. Okay, they end up shifting their entire problem onto us. So now it becomes our problem now. And slowly, slowly, slowly begin siphoning our energy, uh, begin exhausting us, okay? Which often ends up leaving us depleted, right? For, for an issue that we shouldn't have touched in the first place, okay? And why is this happening, guys? Huh? There's two reasons why this is happening, okay? The first reason is what? Because we lack boundaries, both for ourselves and for others, okay? We lack boundaries. And the second reason is what? We volunteer to help without being asked. Again, the second reason is what? We volunteer, often we volunteer to help without being asked, okay? And so, what should we do here, right? What can we do about this, right? The first thing we need to do is to learn how to set strong, healthy boundaries, specifically emotional boundaries, because that's where it starts, right? We are emotional sponges, okay? We absorb others' emotions and we feel others' emotions deeply. Okay, which make us want to walk in their shoes and take on their burdens. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, uh, guys, is what? Set strong, healthy, emotional boundaries. Okay, how do we do this exactly? Hmm? We have to be able to what? Listen to people's problems without feeling compelled to step in and help. Okay? Again, we have to be able to listen to people's problems without feeling compelled to step in and save them, okay? By simply holding space for them to allow them to express themselves, okay? By simply holding space for them to allow them to express themselves, right? We can lend them a shoulder to cry on. Okay, without getting involved in their situation. You understand? We can lend them a shoulder to cry on without getting actively involved in their problem. You understand? Without taking on their problem and assuming that savior complex. Okay? Let's resist the urge to want to be the savior all the time. Okay? Let's resist the urge to want to help folks all the time. Let's resist the urge to want to fix folks all the time, okay? And instead, huh, allow them to express themselves, okay? Give them a shoulder to cry on and allow them to express themselves huh? and replace the urge to help. Huh? We could help in a passive way without getting actively involved or getting actively consumed in their problem, okay? Instead of getting actively involved, what we can do is offer counseling, okay? We can offer them advice, we can offer them counseling, we can offer them guidance, okay? But let's resist the urge to get actively involved in other people's problems, okay? Because what this leads to like I said earlier, it's often they end up shifting their burden onto us, which ends up depleting us huh? and exhausting us and ends up draining our energy for something that we had nothing to do with in the first place. Okay, so let's simply hold space for people to express themselves, okay? Let's hold space for people to express their frustrations, to express their anger, huh? to express, express their burdens, okay? And in return, instead of getting actively involved, offer them some form of counseling, some form of advice, some form of guidance as to how to move forward, okay? 
without getting actively involved. It's been said many times over that you can put yourself in other's shoes, but do not live in them, okay? You can put yourself in other's shoes, but do not live in them, okay? So let's learn to empathize and sympathize with people, okay? Without actively taking on their fight, okay? Their fight is their fight, all right? Let's learn to sit with them when they need someone to sit with them. Let's lend them a, a listening ear when they need someone to listen to them, all right? Let's counsel them. Let's advise them when they need to hear a different point of view, right? Let's guide them when they need guidance, all right? But let's not actively take on their fight, all right? Like I said earlier, a lot of folks that we, we often venture out to help, they're not ready for help. Okay, a lot of folks that we venture out to fix or venture out to save, they're not ready for, for to be saved or they're not ready to be fixed. Okay, they're narcissistic and they're seeing our help as supply. Okay, only way they're looking at it is they got a new supply. Okay, so let's learn to pull back our energy, all right, and hold on to our energy until it's required because i shared in the previous video those who actually need help huh people who actually need help they will seek out the help okay they will ask for help all right so let's hold back our energy let's pull back our energy let's resist the urge to actively help people right until they ask for the help okay until they seek out the help okay at that point then we know they're asking us for help and we could go in willfully and help them out to, to the best of our limits, all right? Not give them our all and end up draining and depleting ourselves either, okay? So let's wait for folks to ask for help, all right? Let's wait for folks to seek out help before we jump out there to help them, all right? Because those who are ready to be helped, huh? Those who are ready to be saved, those who are ready to be fixed, those who are ready to be healed, guys, they will seek it out, okay? So let's wait for that, all right? Let's wait for folks to seek out our help before we jump out of there trying to help them or trying to heal them or trying to fix them or any of that stuff, okay? Let's not volunteer to help because oftentimes our efforts go to waste, okay? Oftentimes, our efforts go to waste, and these individuals end up even getting worse than we found them, okay? So let's wait until folks are ready to be helped, and when they seek out the help, then we can actively get involved with them and sit with them and actually put forth as much effort as necessary to help them, all right? We're not going to help nobody who's not ready for help, okay? Who's not ready to be helped? Not everybody that we come across that need, that look like they need help is ready to be helped, all right? Not everybody we come across that look like they need healing is ready to be healed. Not everybody we come across who look like they need saving is ready to be saved. Not everybody we come across that look like they need fixing is ready to be fixed, okay? So let's hold on to our energy, all right? And allow folks to seek out our help before we jump out there and try to help them, okay? And five, let's learn to set strong, healthy, emotional boundaries, okay? How do we do this, guys? By resisting the urge to beat the Savior all the time, okay? By resisting the urge to help all the time, okay? Let's learn to listen to folks without taking on their problems. Let's learn to walk in full shoes without living in them, okay? Let's learn to replace that urge to help with counseling, with advising, with guidance, okay? Let's learn to sympathize and empathize with folks without getting actively involved in their battle, okay? Let's make sure that the folks that we're helping, the folks that we're healing, the folks that we're fixing, are folks who are ready for all of those things, okay? Instead, let's hold space for them, all right? If, if a friend needs a shoulder to cry on, 
by all means, be there for them, but don't get actively involved, okay? Be there for them, and, and when they're done venting, you can counsel them, or you can give them some guidance, or you can give them some advice, but don't actively get involved, all right? Let's create space for folks to express themselves without getting actively involved, all right? Let's resist that compelling feeling of wanting to save them, huh? that compelling feeling of wanting to help them until we're asked, okay? So I hope I made it clear enough, guys. Until next time, peace, love, and more life.